I'm going to NAD for the rest of my life and I'm never going to age. I'm never going to age confidence of Haley Bieber's has definitely got people curious about NAD. And she's not the only one. Celebrities like Jennifer Aniston and Gwyneth Paltrow are using NAD to stay younger and live longer. NAD Plus is becoming a really hot topic in longevity these days. And researchers have been exploring it for past two to three decades. What's interesting today is that even biohackers, citizen scientists, and celebrities have started coming and spreading awareness about it. Multiple studies have been examining NAD Plus roles in slowing down aging or even reversing certain aspects of it. And there's some convincing evidence already there which can tell us that NAD Plus is involved in cellular energy mechanisms, maintaining the structure of DNA, or even countering inflammation in certain cases. NAD, or nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, is crucial for our cell's survival and, by extension, for our overall survival. It is involved in more than 300 essential processes in our body, and its role in DNA repair, inflammation, and cellular energy production is critical for longevity. For much of human history, diseases were a major factor preventing longer lifespans. With the development of vaccines and medicines, we've been able to combat many of these diseases, leading to a dramatic increase in life expectancy from just 32 years in the early 1900s to 71 years by the 2000s. But what is the value of these additional years if they come at the cost of our health? Lifespan refers to the number of years you live, but the real focus should be on health span. The years lived in good health, free of disease and decline. The goal of entire longevity industry, seeing billions of dollars of investment today, is to increase health span. If we really crack the code of health span, could we be living at the age of 100 with the vitality of a 60 or a 70 year old? Well, that's a very interesting question. But the answer to that will only come as we progress more into this field. And that progress by far is happening very rapidly. Years of research have shown that as we age, our health span decreases because our bodies become less efficient at functioning. One of the primary reasons for this decline is the accumulation of cellular damage over time, which causes our cells to become defective. These damaged cells lose their ability to perform normal functions, contributing to the onset of various diseases. One of the leading examples of how cellular damage causes disease is dementia. We know that dementia is a disease that usually occurs in extremely aged people, usually above the age of 65. So what does dementia tell us about aging? Well, if you pick up cells from the brain of a dementia patient, put it under a microscope and put it under full zoom, you will see that there's a lot of accumulated damage within the cell. And we know that for a fact that diseases like dementia, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's have actually accumulated damaged proteins within the cells and has been identified as one of the reasons why these disease occurs. A similar kind of pathology could also be seen in rapidly aging cells, which says that most of these diseases are actually coming from aged cells or when cells age, they tend to accumulate damage and then convert into a disease. Another example of how cellular damage causes disease is diabetes. When cells in certain tissues are damaged, they become less efficient at detecting and absorbing sugar from the blood, causing glucose to build up and potentially leading to type 2 diabetes. Similarly, when an essential part of DNA is damaged and cells fail to stop dividing as they should, they can become cancerous. Returning to the issue of aging, it was once considered an inevitable process, but things took a significant turn in 2019 when the World Health Organization officially classified aging as a disease. This groundbreaking recognition has sparked a wave of scientific innovation, with researchers now focusing on directly targeting and reversing the underlying causes of aging, as well as finding cures for the diseases it causes. Multiple studies coming out of prestigious universities and labs in the recent times have started indicating that aging is a root cause to multiple chronic diseases or non-communicable diseases. The four major ones that we know of today is type 2 diabetes, cancer, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's and cardiovascular diseases. Well, if you even check the hallmarks of cancer and hallmarks of aging, there is a lot of overlap between them. 
which means that aging is somehow contributing to every of this disease that we know of today. Multiple laboratories have now started exploring how can we actually target the process of aging itself biologically. There are multiple animal models being used, cellular models being used, and even human systems are being used to study the biology of aging. Multiple interventions are being tried out on the processes of aging and has seen remarkable results already in the animal models where aging has been reversed or maximum lifespan has been extended in some of the species. For decades, scientists searched for ways to extend lifespan. But the breakthrough came in 1991 when MIT researcher Leonard P. Guarente discovered that sirtuin genes could extend the lifespan of yeast cells. However, it wasn't until later studies that sirtuins truly captured the spotlight. Researchers found that these genes are present in nearly all living organisms. And by 2001 and 2004, experiments demonstrated that activating sirtuins could significantly extend the lifespan of worms and fruit flies. Sirtuins, now also dubbed longevity genes, are key to extending both lifespan and health span. The proteins produced by these genes can reverse and repair cellular damage, which, as we saw earlier, contributes to the aging process. These proteins repair DNA, reduce inflammation that can harm our cells, and carry out other vital processes that help maintain youthfulness. In the journey to learn more about sirtuins, scientists discovered that the proteins produced by these genes depend on NAD, that small but powerful molecule we mentioned earlier. NAD molecules act as cofactors for sirtuins. Cofactors are substances that enhance the efficiency of enzymes, making them crucial for various biological processes to occur smoothly. Well, NAD plus is kind of a raw material and a fuel for these systems of enzymes and genes, which actually participate in repair mechanisms or removing the damage. Researchers have found that as we age, NAD levels decline leading to a reduction in sirtuin production, which can contribute to the accumulation of DNA damage. This decline in NAD ranges from 10% to 65% across different organs and tissues. To mitigate its negative effects, we must compensate for this decline. Thanks to scientists throughout the world that now we actually have strategies to increase NAD plus in our bodies. There are some popular ways which have already been explored and are already in the market. Well, one of those early days entrant was NAD plus IV. But there were some drawbacks with it. First, it is invasive. You actually have to get pricked to get NAD plus in IV form. Secondly, there are some studies that are suggesting that the NAD plus taken through IV gets quickly broken down into the bloodstream and it becomes really difficult for cells to absorb it. Another reason could also be that the amount of clinical trials backing NAD plus IV usage are not so frequent, therefore the safety is still into question. The other more accessible way to increase NAD plus is by supplementation with its precursor. So precursors are actually molecules which get readily converted into NAD plus. There are two very popularly known precursors for NAD plus. One is the nicotinamide riboside or NR and the other one is nicotinamide mononucleotide or NMA. Well, the difference between the two is that NR takes two steps to get converted to NAD+, whereas NMN takes only one step to get converted to NAD+. Which is why it is believed that NMN is a stronger precursor to NAD+, and a much better or a wiser strategy into increasing your NAD plus levels in the body. Dr. Charles Brenner, who identified the significance of NMN in NAD synthesis, has stated that supplementing with NMN can improve age-related conditions. More than 20 animal studies and human clinical trials have shown that NMN supplementation raises NAD levels in the blood. However, does this increase translate into real health benefits? Additionally, is NMN safe to take? The FDA considers NMN safe for consumption and has given it the GRAS tag, which stands for generally recognized as safe. One of the earliest safety studies conducted by a Japanese research group found that NMN supplements boosted NAD levels in 10 men over the age of 40 without causing side effects, such as an increased heart rate. This study led by Dr. Yoshino and published in the renowned Nature Communications Journal in 2020, concluded that NMN was well tolerated by participants, 
with no serious adverse effects reported. To date, all human trials have demonstrated that NMN is safe. If NMN is safe, then why is there a buzz about its ban by the US FDA? The US FDA banned NMN in late 2022 because it decided to reclassify it as a drug. Although NMN had been registered as a dietary supplement after the FDA recognized it as a new dietary ingredient in May 2022, the FDA required more testing when considering it as a drug to ensure its safety and effectiveness. The ban was imposed to allow for these additional tests, not because of safety concerns. In addition to its safety, NMN has shown promising benefits. A fascinating finding from Professor David Sinclair's lab revealed that NMN supplements extended the lifespan of mice, especially females, by 8.5% given that female mice typically die earlier than males. While it will take time to study NMN's effects on human lifespan, since humans generally live longer than laboratory mice, short-term studies have already shown that NMN offers benefits for healthy aging. For example, as we discussed earlier, when cells can't detect glucose, it leads to type 2 diabetes. The condition in which cells can't detect glucose is called insulin resistance, which is a precursor to diabetes. In a clinical trial involving 25 pre-diabetic women, 10 weeks of NMN supplementation improved insulin sensitivity by 25%, highlighting its potential as a beneficial intervention to avoid age-associated onset of type 2 diabetes. Moreover, NMN has been shown to enhance endurance and physical performance, especially for the elderly population, who often experience energy loss and reduced independence. In a study involving 108 older adults, NMN improved both physical performance and sleep quality. But it's not just the elderly who benefit from NMN. Athletes and active individuals can also experience improvements in endurance. A 2021 study on young runners found that six weeks of NMN supplementation enhanced aerobic capacity which is vital for peak performance. We were the pioneers to bring NMN in India, and it has been now three years. I've seen many individuals speaking to me, talking about their health declines or having one of the chronic disease, which has improved through supplementations of NMN and few particular supplements around longevity industry. I've been constantly communicating with doctors, nutritionists or sports professionals who have been speaking around on game-changing experience with this particular supplement and we love it when we hear from them.